someone asks you what you want to see next to your home park, there's a lot of stuff you got to consider, right? Yeah, absolutely. You, you got to think about what kind of budget does this place have? What kind of rides do they already have? What kind of rides do parks nearby already have? There's a lot mm -hmm. of stuff that goes into it. So we asked our Patreon subscribers what they'd want to see at their home park next. And mind you, these people are spread out quite a bit. Oh um, yeah, sure. We have, we have entries from all across the USA for the sake of this video. Yeah, yeah. There are ones from other countries, but some of them were parks we didn't have footage of because we've never been. But <laughs> someday. <laughs> <laughs> so we narrowed it down to some of our favorite ones. And what we did not tell them is that we are going to give a rating whether we think it is likely, not likely, or somewhere in the middle. 50-50. Okay, mine are labeled a little differently. Mine are not happening, bro. Super, mega, hyper, giga likely, and could go either way. So we're gonna give a rating for each one and uh, have a little fun discussion. First up, we have the wonderful Knott's Berry Farm. And the top answer here was a B&M hyper coaster. You know, I have to give it to them for going from giga to hyper. We, we've decided, it's more realistic. <laughs> we've, we've decided giga's not happening. So like, can we just at least get a hyper coaster? So it's a hyper. I'm going could go either way. 50-50. Hey, look at that. So I think it'd be a great fit. There are no B&M hyper coasters on that side of the Mississippi River. Yeah, the River. closest you get is Raging Bull yeah. at Six Flags Great America. So not at all close. In that regard, I think it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I think that they really could use a good um, traditional steel coaster that is airtime focused. Because mm -hmm. right now your airtime ride is Ghost Rider. The other rides are either focused on speed, a la Accelerator, inversions like some of the other thrill coasters, or they're tamer family rides. But I love a B&M Hyper because it is extreme without being too much. The real problem that Nas is gonna run into is just uh, finding space for it. But if they can make that work, and clearly I think there's some options out there, um, Cedar Fair has a working relationship with B&M. I don't think it's out of the question. Yeah, my main concern is also the people that live in the area. The noise, that seems like- They the, don't seem to like it. Yeah, that seems like the big driving uh, factor, but we'll have to wait and see. All right, next park we're looking at is Soda Hour City, and the top answer here was a dive coaster. Likely. I'm going could go either way because it seems like, I mean, obviously they like B&M. Yeah. And they did wildfire with them. But it seems like they are focusing a bit more on families right now. And I feel like if they were going to go with B&M, I would love to see them do something more like a hyper style ride. Yeah. More than a dive coaster. Because anything with inversions instantly becomes a little more intimidating to younger kids and yeah. stuff, you know? No, that's fair. I I would love to see a B&M hyper coaster at Silver Hour City. Um, I'm not I, overly hopeful about that one either. <laughs> yeah, that one, uh, that one's tough. I th I think I agree with you that they are definitely looking more family focused. I don't think that a dive coaster would be next for Silver City. That being said, I do think that this is an awesome option because I think dive coasters are so themable. Uh, Silver City, they really care about that. I think that the you can incorporate uh, great views and uh, a fantastic use of terrain. A dive coaster, I feel like, has a lot of potential. I think that this would be an excellent fit, and there, where even would be their nearest dive coaster at another park? I, I don't know. It's don't nowhere know. nearby, that's for sure. Carowinds is home to a ton of roller coasters, but a lot of them are just kind of okay. They're what I would call like filler rides. So, what could Carowinds use in the future? The top answer was a wooden coaster from either GCI or Gravity Group. I'm going not happening, bro. I'm going 50-50. Because I want that to happen. Oh, I would love this. This would be my top answer, too. It seems like they're pretty darn complacent with Hurler, <sighs> unfortunately. It annoys me, I man. Know. So I guess the reason why I go 50-50 is because uh, in the recent survey that they released, they said that they're looking at a water coaster, or like a family thrill coaster, and a wind coaster was not one of those options. That being said, I don't think that means it's completely out of the question. And Cedar Fair does have a strong relationship with both GCI and Gravity Group. They've used both companies for recent projects. And so I think that this is something that could be on the radar, but um, similar to Silver Hour City, I don't, I don't think that this would be next, but I do think that, you know, the next 10 years, I, I, I could see it. All right, next one on the list was Six Flags Magic Mountain. And the top answer here actually by a lot of people was a giga coaster. Unlikely. I'm saying the opposite. What? Yeah. Really? Yes. I don't think Six Flags is gonna spend the money. You don't? No. Not even at Magic Mountain, which is like their no. like favorite child. No. I think they would go for other cool 
supporting additions in the thrill department, but I don't think they would go all in on a giga coaster. I think it could happen eventually because here's the thing, if you want to keep people like seeing your park as like the big top thrill park in the US or whatever, like you gotta keep going higher and longer and faster. And like, that's one way to do it. I think that if they wanted to go like with something thrilling, like I, personally, I, I would have gone more in the direction of like a dive coaster. Yeah. I, th I think that would make more sense at Magic Mountain. Like, believe me, a gig at Magic Mountain sounds awesome, but like I- Like a terrain giga? Yeah, but like, I think that there's other very cool options they could add that would still diversify their collection. Like, frick, an Axis coaster would be awesome. I mean, I'd like an, <laughs> give me the 300 foot Axis. <laughs> Through leaked documents, we know that Busch Gardens Williamsburg's next roller coaster is going to be a B&M family invert, but we still ask fans, what do you want to see at the park, uh, excluding the additions that we already know are coming? And uh, the top answer here was, funny enough, an RMC hybrid, a la Iron Gwazi. I'm going to go with the elusive fourth answer that is, I don't know anymore, man. <laughs> I'm going unlikely. Because that's... Definitely what it seemed like was happening and then it clearly they something changed their minds But it's like if they were really doing this project, how far along were they like yeah. is it still like hey? We want to do this, but we don't want to do it next year We want to wait until 2026 or 7 or whatever. I don't know. I yeah, don't, I don't know man I I said unlikely because if it's true that they were working on a big RMC hybrid coaster in the back of the park And then they switched plans to go with a B&M family invert I think that means that those plans are dead and that would have been the plot of land to put a ride like that. You know, and you, that's a huge area. And so I think it, I think it means it's not going to happen. If you had asked me a year ago, I would have said likely. Absolutely. I would have said uh, super mega hyper giga likely, which is way more, uh, has more chutzpah to it. You yeah. Know? Okay. <laughs> Poor Valley Fair, man. This park has just been neglected in the, the new coaster department for so long. They deserve so much better. And you know what? The top answer here was a B&M looper. And I think it was specified by a lot of people. Just something with an inversion, right? Yeah, the last one was uh, their corkscrew coaster, which I think was in the 70s. Yeah. That's really bad. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think that the, the, you know, chain knows that they can only hold off for so long before they really start to piss off their frequent visitors. So I'm going to say super mega hyper giga likely. I am going likely. I think that they have been paying a lot more attention to their middle of the pack parks recently. Dorney, Worlds of Fun. I think Valley Fair is up next. They've gone with B&M for some uh, recent additions. I think that would make a ton of sense about it. Literally, you could just give them a B and M invert. Yeah, I know they're like or a wing coaster, yeah. something. Just like I didn't know there's like a ton of them out there, but like not up there, not yeah. in that part of the country, you know. I think this will happen. Like if I if I had a card that said super giga likely, I probably would. You can borrow it. Super giga likely B and M looper at Valley Fair. I think it. I think it'll happen one it's day. It's super mega hyper giga likely. Lagoon recently opened up their huge family coaster Primordial. It's already got people thinking down the pipeline, what is next? What else could they add? Because they have a decent amount of roller coasters, but a lot of them are on the tamer side. Really, they only have like a couple in the thrill department. So fans said they want a roller coaster with airtime. Not really specified by who or anything, just like give us some airtime in this park. Yeah, yeah, uh, no manufacturer was really sad. People were just like, look, this is this is a park that isn't really known for airtime. You have the old roller coaster named Roller Coaster that has some airtime, but you know, it's an older classic. You probably need something a bit more modern, like yeah. um, ejector airtime. It could yeah. be, but, but that also doesn't exclude a wind coaster. I think you could still go a wind coaster with airtime, so. Well, the thing is they like to make all their own stuff too, right? So like, I'd like to think that they can see that that is the thing that is lacking in their lineup. So I'm gonna say very likely. Unlikely. That they'll add any airtime? I don't think they will. Really? I don't think they will. I want it so bad. Wow. But because they like doing things themselves, I don't think they make something with airtime. I don't think they will though. It seems like they are comfortable with making family coasters. Uh, they definitely have spent more money on theming recently. It seems like that's where a lot of their budgets are going. I don't think they're gonna do it. But believe me, I want one so bad. That's well, I'm bad. rooting for you, people of the lagoon 
region. Oh, I am too. I'm right there up with you. Next on the list was Worlds of Fun, which just got Zambies Zinger this last year. But I mean, you gotta wonder like what's gonna come next. And the top answer was b &M Giga. I'm going- Unlikely. Not happening, bro. I think it'd be cool. And here's the thing, Worlds of Fun has the land for it. I don't think Cedar Fair is gonna give them the money. The only scenario where I see something like this even remotely happening is, I'll give them credit, the Kansas City area is booming. Um, but it would need to have such a huge impact on Worlds of Fun that attendance would be have to go through the roof. That they're like, well, yeah, uh, we feel comfortable spending this amount of money that we'd see a return on investment. Some of their major parks don't have something like that that I think they would prioritize first. And yeah. I feel like Worlds of Fun is more middle of the pack. And I don't know that they saw the return on investment that they were hoping for with Zambezi. Yeah. Which is probably going to make them pump the brakes. I'm like, all right, let's wait. Yeah, Again. <laughs> I think the more likely option is a launch coaster. So yeah. They don't have a launch coaster. I feel like you can go um, extreme, but you know, still in a relatively compact space. Uh, you could go, you know, moderate thrills and still be conscious of budget. I feel like that would make more sense for them. And speaking of launch coasters, a launch coaster was the top answer for Six Flags New England. Uh, they also do not have a launch coaster. Likely. Very likely. The the people that said this cited Max for specifically, and I think that something like that at that park would be so cool. Yeah, I could definitely see something like that happening. Um, and not even necessarily saying something like Max Force, although no. I do I do love that addition, but you could even go with something that's like family thrill with a tire driven launch or something. Yeah. Uh, I feel like there are a lot of options and specifically if you look at the plot of land where Goliath was there is definitely room for something there. And if you wanted to take out the boomerang next door to it too, I don't think too many people would complain. And that gives you more space. Yeah, <laughs> it, here's the thing. There's so like so many different kinds of launch coasters out there, like you said. Like if it was more specific, like an Intamin Ellison multi-launch, like something like- With a drop coaster, track. And I'd, be like, like, I'd be like, that's, 10 inversions. that's probably not happening. <laughs> but launch coaster can mean so many different things. So I'm gonna say it's very likely that at some point in the near future, they have a launch yeah. coaster at their I give them the next two years. I think they are, do. All right, next one is at a park that has probably one of the most dense enthusiast populations in the U.S., and that is Six Flags Great America. The top answer here was actually a raptor, which they already worked with RMC in that park. I'm going to say it could go either way. 50-50. Yep. I'm going either way because of that. I, I could see it happening, but I could also see them going with something different. Yeah. You know what I mean? I feel like a raptor in the style of Jersey Devil would be a fantastic fit there. I think it would work really, really well in their lineup. I know that they could find space for it. I think the little Buccaneer Battle plot of land has been cited many, many times, but I could also see them going a few other different directions. So I think take it or leave it. From one dense enthusiast population to another, uh, Cincinnati is home to a park that is very well loved, and that's Kings Island. Kings Island. And they also recently sent out a survey asking about uh, what roller coasters would you be most drawn to, and one of their answers was a mock extreme spinner, and that happened to be also the top choice of what coaster fans said they would love to see at Kings Island. And because of that, I'm gonna say it could go either way, because it seems like it is one of their options, but not necessarily the option. I think I'm in the same boat. Yeah. I think, I wanted to say likely, and I almost did. But you know what, I, I I would agree with you if it was like a normal looking yeah. spinner. Like this thing looks kind of dumb. Yeah, the thing that, I hope that if they get a extreme spinner, it's not what was released. I think that this would be a brilliant fit in the park. It'd be an amazing successor to Vortex. That was such an iconic ride. I feel like you could do so many cool things with a mock extreme spinner. But There's I, just a ton of inversions on it. Yeah, you? yeah, but I think there are also several other good possibilities for Kings Island, and that's why I'm not gonna say likely, because I could, I could see them going another direction. Hershey Park has probably one of the most stacked lineups in the world at this point, as far as coasters. So thinking about like, hey, what do they need next? It's a little tough, because there aren't any really huge gaps in their lineup. Yeah, right now. yeah. So the top answer, and it was pretty widespread, was a large scale family coaster, which, you know what? I am gonna say, super likely. Yeah, I think likely. I definitely could see them doing this. Um, yeah. They love family coasters, and I think that they 
have the land that they could add something really, really cool. I think uh, several people cited a ride like Big Bear Mountain at Dollywood for this. And I think that's a that's a great idea. Uh, they have some good family coasters in the park, but that doesn't mean that they couldn't add more. And I know that they would be well received. So like my pipe dream, and I'm gonna share this even though I sound like an absolute nutbag saying it, uh, I want a like a pond or like a lake of chocolate with a straddle coaster. So you like, you're like going over the chocolate and you can like reach in and be like. Whoa. You mean like water that looks like chocolate? No, like chocolate. Like real chocolate. Uh, you water do, you that, do sound like a nutbag. <laughs> water that looks like chocolate would just be brown water. That sounds gross. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but no, I, I genuinely, I do think that this is the logical next step. Like they've done so many big high thrill coasters. Like I, it's I definitely time. think it's time. And you know what? I am okay with them dialing down right now because they have so many good thrill coasters. Yes, like, definitely. It's fine. Poor Wild Waves in Seattle is up next. Oh, this park needs so much. There's so much they could do with. Um, so I, I will applaud the people who were uh, like saying this is their home park. I feel like they were at least being semi-realistic and not going with a giga or crazy arms or something. They you said- say giga? No. I'm in, let's do it. They said a free spin from s, &S. I don't hate that option. I don't, but I don't think they give a damn about this park. I'm saying not happening, <laughs> I'm bro. I'm saying unlikely. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't, I don't think, think they'll they do could it. care less about this park if they tried. Yeah, this place uh, needs a lot of help. Um, I think that a free spin would be fun there. Like, it, you know, it's a plug and play model. Uh, it doesn't take up too much space. They could probably get it at a decent price. I still don't think they're gonna do it though. <laughs> nope. So as everybody knows, uh, one of my favorite roller coasters I've ever been on is the Boss. You've never ridden the Boss. I've never ridden the Boss. But if I had, I'd probably still agree with this. Uh, RMC the Boss, baby. I'm saying not happening, bro. I'm saying unlikely. I think if they were gonna do it, they would have done it already. You gotta think like Hershey when they heard people non-stop being like, please do something about Wildcat, do something about Wildcat. And I, they're hearing the same noise, like do something about the Boss, do something about the Boss. And they're like, no. <laughs> I'll we'll do anything except that, please. I like to think that Six Flags St. Louis will get a new coaster in a realistic amount of time. Like, I know they just got, you know, a new family coaster from Vacoma, but um, their last thrill coaster was a used boomerang. And they also have some kind of junky rides in the park, like Ninja, and yeah, people don't really like the boss. So, like, a new thrill coaster would be great, but... It seems like Six Flags is done working with RMC for this stuff. That's also why I wasn't too sure about it, a Raptor at Great America, but I still feel like a Raptor at Great America would happen before Boss would happen, which is which is sad, but I don't know, that's, that's the vibe I'm getting. I agree. Alabama Adventure is up next. Uh, so this is a park that ha doesn't receive a whole lot of investment. Most of the time when they do receive investment, it goes to their water park. I only visited the park once, and it seemed like everyone was in the water park, and the dry park was like a ghost town. So when people are talking about like what roller coaster they want to see, um, again, I will apply people, they were being semi-realistic and the top answer was a Eurofighter. You know what? I'm gonna say likely. I'm gonna say it could go either way because I've never been to this park and I have not a clue I, um, <laughs> what their situation yeah, is. I think they are definitely on a budget. Um, so they have to be considerate of like, you know, what their options are. And I think there are some plug and play Euro fighters that they could add that would be a nice addition to that park and not necessarily break the bank. I don't know if that will be happening soon. It seems like their next focus is gonna be on fixing up Rampage, but maybe a few years after that, I, I could see this happening. Okay. So Fiesta Texas has been just a hub for investment in the Six Flags chain. And one of the top answers that we had here was a GCI which I would love to see at this park. I'm saying 50-50. I'm saying 50-50 as well. I think that there are some really good possibilities that could also go to Fiesta Texas, aside from a GCI. Correct. So like a GCI would work well, but it doesn't necessarily mean that some of those other options should be disregarded. Also, my thing with them is that they like to go with things that are new ideas a lot of the time. Yeah. So like they got like the first free spin, they got like, the first Raptor, they got one of the first um, RMC yep. iBox coasters. So if I had to like take a genuine guess, and I'm not just saying this because like I never shut up about it, I think that they might go with an Axis. I think that that is something that Jeffrey Siebert would definitely be pushing for because he is an enthusiast, not only about his own park, but about the industry as a whole. Mm -hmm. And that is innovation right there. Oh, it absolutely. 
absolutely is. Yeah, I, I think um, that is definitely a decent possibility. And if an Axis coaster was on here, I think I would still go 50-50 though. Like I still don't know if I would necessarily say likely. I, I think that it definitely stands a decent chance. Where's but, the I hope so card? Uh, well, if I had an I hope so card, I'd be saying that for almost all these. Mm. <laughs> so we'll have to wait and see. Which brings us to our final park of the video, and that is, of course, Cedar Point. And the top answer here was pretty unanimously a large-scale wooden roller. Coaster. Actually, I would say that the most common answer that I saw was free lockers for top three, <laughs> too, which I'm going to go with this, um, <laughs> at least for now. But yes, the large-scale Woody was the other one. And I won't lie, when I heard they were redoing the boardwalk section before they announced the Wild Mouse, that's where my brain went. Yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, they could do like a seaside park style Woody. But that didn't happen, and I don't think it's going to happen, sadly. I think I'm also going to go unlikely. Yeah. And I, I really want that, and I think at the end of the day, that would be the best fit for Cedar Point. But <laughs> It would be. It would. But I think they're going to go with a steel coaster, and I think they're going to continue adding steel coasters. That's yeah. just, it seems like, I get they released a survey. No wooden coaster in sight. Yeah, I think they want stuff that's super marketable. Like, And not to say that a wooden coaster isn't marketable, but I feel like crazy steel coasters are have more of a draw to yeah. people and like i know that also the climate there is a concern just like how uh you know you would have similar issues down here in florida mm -hmm. that having a wood coaster you have to deal with like a lot of moisture in the air and you're right by a lake at cedar point so lake Erie um, weather might not be so kind to wind roller coasters yeah. so there might be a reason besides the fact that they want, you know, a steel coaster, that, that they're kind of turned off to wood coasters. Yeah. Blue Streak is there because it's a classic. It's been there. But all those other wood coasters that the Cedar Point had back in the day, those are gone. So I'm sticking with my answer. Yeah. Overall, though, uh, this was fun. There were there were some good answers. I think yeah. it's, it's cool to see how, uh, like, people can be hopeful about uh, what additions they'd like to see, but also being semi-realistic. Yeah, so let us know down in the comments below what you'd love to see at your home park. And if you'd like to participate in more discussion questions like this in the future, patreon.com slash coaster studios. Yeah, let us know uh, if you're going to sign up. Is it that it's not happening, bro? Um, you could go either way. You don't know anymore. Or it's super mega hyper giga likely that you'll sign up. Hopefully that one. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next time.